morning, Mr. Barrett. Hey, how are you? Good. Hey, what do you think about, uh, are you thinking about putting any ethics complaints in? Because it might not be an ethics complaint here. Yeah, we find ourselves in a situation that may possibly be by design from Mr. Trudeau. Uh, you know, this is kind of best case scenario for him, for him, who's a uh, frequent flyer with the Ethics Commissioner's Office, twice found guilty himself, his Intergovernmental Affairs Minister found guilty, who of course is the brother-in-law of the now former Interim Ethics Commissioner who, uh, who resigned from that position after we drew it to the public's attention that they had appointed a family member. Do you think, the, uh, do you, like, do you want to say in the new, new Interim Commissioner? I mean, or do you want them to appoint a new Commissioner at a certain time frame? Well, of, of course, uh, all parties should um, be part of this this process. There needs to be some collaboration. We've seen that the government has broken trust with, you know, with with Parliament and with Canadians with their last selection. Um, this is part of a pattern that we're seeing with them. Uh, the same is true with um, with Mr. Johnston, uh, his appointment to, uh, you know, as the special rapporteur. You know, these things these things can be resolved. You know, in a, in a pretty straightforward way, uh, a public inquiry is certainly much more transparent than appointing someone who is a family friend and neighbor of the prime minister to to make an important decision like the one that he's being asked to make. And and we need to be clear that these aren't commentaries on the uh, on the character of the individuals, Mr. Johnson and uh, Miss Richard. Um, you know, both uh, qualified for the roles that they served in previous to this. But they were put in a terrible position um, by the poor judgment of, of Mr. Trudeau and his cabinet. And so um, it, it undermines Canadians' confidence when there is the, the questions that are raised by the appearance of a conflict of interest. And that's what we see in both of these situations. I just want to raise uh, today there's a big announcement coming for the new Volkswagen plant in St. Thomas. Uh, yesterday, the Minister of uh, Industry, Professor uh, Champagne, said that they're doing something the Conservatives could not, is like keep jobs in St. Thomas. It's a $13 billion deal, though. It seems if you add up the subsidies that could happen over a period of time, uh, possibly about 10 years. So what do you think about that price tag, $13 billion to compete with the subsidies that were received in the United States to encourage green investment in Canada? Is that a wise use of that type of taxpayer's money? You know, they've, they've kept the, the numbers uh, pretty close to their vest up to this point. The, the details of it, we'll, we'll watch the announcement um, today. Um, you know, job creation uh, is, is obviously important, but, you know, um, this government has a demonstrated track record of spending an awful lot and achieving a very small amount. So we'll have to see, uh, we'll have to see how things turn out. Thanks so much. Well, take, take a moment, because in your neck of the woods, the government's launching this big Volkswagen. Not quite your, not your ride, obviously, but, you know, in southwestern Ontario, St. Thomas, uh, this big, uh, you know, EV battery plant for Volkswagen. And we're learning that the price tag, well, the subsidies, let's say, that's going to go along, perhaps, to encourage Volkswagen to, to build that is going to be around $13 billion. So, it's a big number. Do you think that that investment is worth it in this, in this case? Well, obviously, I'm happy about the jobs and, uh, you know, the move to electric vehicles. But what I would say is I'm concerned about getting in a competition with the U.S. in terms of, you know, subsidy financing. And that's part of this, right? That they uh, are very much competing with the IRA. But what's, what's our alternative as a, as a country? Well, I think we need to look at why are we not competitive? Why can we not attract people to come and start businesses in Canada without giving them billions and billions of dollars? Thanks. Place around 13 billion in subsidies for this uh, Volkswagen uh, electric mm. vehicle plant that will go into St. Thomas. So you know a lot of jobs, but it's also a lot of government investment to encourage a foreign company to come here. What do you think about that? Obviously, it's something that's competing with the IRS in the United States. We heard that was going to come out of the budget, but uh, it's a big number. And uh, what do you think about it? So, in a lot of things. Uh, corporate bailouts come really, really fast, and money for corporations come really, really fast. Uh, I think that obviously investing is important, jobs are important, but so is investing in people, and a lot of the money that goes into corporations doesn't actually get to the people working in those plants. So that's always our focus, and that's always what we'll, we'll, we'll look at. What would you like to, would you like to see a different approach? I mean, are you, are you, do you think it's a good thing that this plan has come? Or are you just concerned about the amount of money that perhaps the federal government's offering to Volkswagen to come be here? 
Well, you know, these, these companies, they come because workers are educated, because they have health care, because they, they add to the wealth of that, of that company. So for taxpayers' dollars specifically to just directly go to these companies in that way, I don't think that's as productive as investing in uh, the social programs that make a workforce and therefore a corporation far more uh, beneficial. Can I also ask you uh, on these leaks that came out of the United States, you know, uh, obviously there's a young 21-year-old who's uh, up for charges for the leaks, but with them, the Washington Post uh, had some information that apparently the Prime Minister had said that Canada's never going to get to that 2% target for defense spending for NATO. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what did you think when you heard that? So I know that a lot of, of Canadians, I mean, they're, they're so incredibly proud of what our our troops can do of what we're doing uh, in the Ukraine. Uh, but of course, a, a lot of that that money, that 2%, it's an arbitrary number. Uh, it always has been. And so what I always want to focus on is how we're using that money. And right now we're seeing a government that isn't necessarily investing in troops. We saw what happened in Poland in terms of, of the cooks that they didn't send uh, to feed troops. They're not reimbursing those troops. So it's very, uh, it's very difficult for them to actually be able to afford the impact that has on families, the fact that they don't have health care, the fact that they don't have the housing that they need here. So those are the things that I look at when I t when we need to talk about investing in our military. And uh, that 2% is an arbitrary number last, that I won't really focus question. on. Um, they're planning to reopen Wellington Street. Uh, we all know why it closed. Yeah. But what yeah. do you think about it reopening? You know, I kind of like the fact that it's been closed. Uh, it uh, They've been talking about that for a, a long, long time. And... Um, it's been it's been nice to not have to worry as much, I guess, about traffic in that way. But I know that it's also caused a lot of issues for bus routes and for for people uh, moving around this city. So uh, I see the, the the pluses and cons of it on both sides. So should, should the federal government take jurisdiction, take ownership of it, uh, increase have PPS do security? What would well, there's a lot of there's a lot of discussions about that. I think that that's probably best uh, left for that administrative side of the House of Commons to discuss with PPS. I know that that's what they were they were advocating for. It, it helps them to better protect members, and it's certainly during the the convoy, a lot of us were worried about that in terms of our security. So, whatever that administrative branch that keeps members safe and and helps them to do their job better, I would support that. All right, thank you. Well, I can tell you I've never been in favor of it. I was part of the parliamentary uh, group that had uh, recommended that we keep uh, closed down Wellington Street for security as well for uh, important urban planning reasons. Uh, so I do think my, my opinion hasn't changed. There's nothing that has, uh, that has led me to change my mind on that. The opposition is also concerned that now that uh, Ms. Richard has stepped down as the interim ethics commissioner, there is no ethics commissioner for ethics complaints. Um, should the government, you know, do something uh, in a more hasty fashion, perhaps, or why, the last is, was there any other mechanism, I suppose, that would put someone who all of the parties in the House of Commons could agree on in that position of ethics commissioner? You know? Well, that will be uh, when, uh, as a search uh, reaches its end, and then there is a recommendation that's made to all the different political parties in the House and that person will receive the approval. That will be our new uh, ethics commissioner. Are, are you concerned that there's no ethics commissioner? If someone want, if there is an ethics violation that someone wanted to the make ethics, a complaint for? Well, I, the way I would put it to you that there's there's just not one person. Let, let's understand how this all works. Sure. There's not just one person in the office of the commissioner for ethics uh, and conflict of interest. There's a whole team of people. Um, and so those people, uh, I'm certain, will continue to do the good work in supporting uh, who the new person will be and that new person I hope will be named soon. Thank you. Thank you. What do you think about the fact that reopening Wellington? Um, we all know why. We all know why. Um, we all know why. I, um, I did hope to be an opportunity to uh, redevelop the space. Uh, I think there's a lot of issues of security the parliamentarians need to discuss and Wellington is one of those streets. So. Hopefully there's further discussion between the city and the federal government because uh, I believe really the uh, jurisdiction and security of Wellington Street should be uh, under the Parliamentary uh, Protective Service. So should the federal government buy it from Ottawa? 
my preference would be negotiated to uh, have the federal government take control of that, yeah. Thank you so much. Take care.